you look at you, Melissa, when we're doing this? Or? Oh, just at whoever's talking. <laughs> Yes. with just a little bit about this groundbreaking yeah. and the building itself. Well, this is a very special day. I mean, there have only really been three major construction projects uh, in the history of this department being in this location. 1972 and 1973 was the main jail, and 1990 was the actual building of the module units. And today, 2018, is the beginning of what is going to be our central intake medical uh and regional resource center. So it's going to be an, it's an incredible day for us to have such a monumental building that really begins the re-entry process here on day one. The minute you get in this facility, you will enter this building. This building begins the process of getting you back to being a productive citizen. So it's a really special day. And how is this going to help, um, as was stated, local police departments? Well, the other part of this is that there's there's been a need in this community. We have dozens of communities in Worcester County that have nowhere to keep inmates. Someone gets arrested, for example, over the weekend, uh, drunk driving or picked up. They don't have the facility to hold them. They're not professionally in the business of custody. And what they have had to do in the past is have an officer taken off the street, pay thousands of dollars, and then have somebody bring them McDonald's, for example, and medical care is a question, and they sit in a cell until they go to court Monday morning. Now we want to be able to provide a place with enough cells that they can bring them, we can coordinate getting them here, we can have the care custody control of the entire weekend, and we will be able to pay for it, we'll be able to provide a better environment for those people while they await going to court on Monday morning. So instead of sitting in every regional town in the county, costing taxpayers tons of money, and at the same time is having police departments that are not in the business of doing it, bring them to the professionals, and we now have a place we can do that, and this is what this building is going to afford us to do, is expand. We tried to do it now, but we have such limited space, we do it for Boylston and West Boylston as host communities and beyond that it's very challenging this is going to expand us probably in the 20 to 30 beds uh, a day as opposed to just a few and how was this funded this was all funded through the state uh, department of capital asset management dcam is the state agency they get an allocation of a few hundred million dollars a year to build projects and we were able to get ourselves in the project list for this year and next year two-year period to complete this building so it took the administration I want to thank the Baker Plato administration they listened to us they knew that we had substandard facilities and this was a big investment and as I mentioned in my remarks this is a big investment to the people of Worcester County their public safety I promise that will be enhanced by having this quality of a building here to start that re-entry process for these inmates who are going to get released most of them back to our communities we're going to make sure they're on the right track from the moment they get here Right now, they're all over the map here. The facility is substandard, and there's no coherent way to get them through our system. This is going to be the, the center of the wheel where we can assess them and then send them out to the facility where they belong. How much will the project cost? This is a $20 million uh, project, perhaps even $22 million. Can you speak to the medical services that will be offered here? I know yep. dialysis and yep. opioids were mentioned. Yep. Can you talk about that? Well, 90% of the people are substance abusers. We need to assess people. When they come into our facility, right now we have a, a, an antiquated building with very limited capacities and we have to quickly assess people uh, in really an area that don't, they, they, I mean, for example, we used to assess people under mental health services in the hallway because we didn't have rooms and we found out later that was it was inappropriate and not permitted. So we built some uh, kind of ad hoc offices to bring people into. This is not a way to operate a facility like this. Now we're going to have a, a special hallway, a special area for medical intake. People will go through, they'll meet with our correction staff, they'll be assessed, you'll find out their criminal background, their gang affiliations, uh, their record. You'll find out whether they belong in you know, pre-trial or sentenced uh, populations. And then within that population, what are their backgrounds? In other words, what's their medical issues? Are they detoxing? You know, do they need mental health services? They'll be assessed in this building in a much better condition to do that, and also their educational level. So when they get moved from this facility, we'll have a much better handle on who we have in our facility and where they belong. So to me, when you talk about re-entry beginning on day one, this is precisely what we're talking about. I think that's all. How do you stay so cool when it's so hot? I am, I'm, 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 I'm,